first 30 years of my career, I spent, well, 20 years avoiding the media because they scared me to death. Somebody once, I did a story and they got the headline wrong and the dean was unhappy and it was a, somewhat of a disaster. So whenever I'd be called, I'd be very boring. However, the more I worked with the media, as, when I was head of the Manitoba Center, it became clear that what the, the government paid attention to us because the media paid attention to us, and the media paid attention to us because the government paid attention to us. So I began to be quite interested in how do you communicate evidence to the media. It turns out that CIHR, Canadians for Health Research, had a grant program where they encouraged researchers to partner with the media. So we put together a proposal, identified some journalism professors, people who were interested in working with academics to figure out how to basically convince academics, one, that it's important to communicate with the media, and two, help them to understand how the journalists need rapid response, they need clear, simple statements that you can't always say, well, what we need is more research. My agenda was to, okay, tell us what stories you're going to be working on where it would be useful if we got the evidence organized in a way which was very accessible and easy for you to use. Uh, what are the topics that we should be working on? And we were told full blast by the people who were there, forget that. We don't know what we're going to be working on tomorrow. What we want is access, easy access to the experts. Tell us who the experts are put their contact information up on the web, tell them that we need a response, not, you know, I'll talk to you next week when I've got my paper finished. We need responses within two to three hours, and that's basically what we're looking for. So we started submitting those to papers across the country, and it's been you know, frankly, enormously successful. We've had, in the past year and a half, almost 500 op-eds published in major publications. And if you count all of the small, the weeklies, et cetera, we know we're up 800, 900, maybe even 1,000 publications. But we've had individuals who've had an op-ed been called up by a committee of, at the federal level doing finance review and asked to go down and testify. One of our members, experts, Marnie Brownell, wrote a paper about the very high rates of taking kids into care in Manitoba. It was in the paper that afternoon. She had a call from the inquiry wanting to talk to her about what the issues really were. So that has been a, it's clear it's a very powerful way of people having access to academic evidence, which they otherwise, I mean, who's going to read your paper in the, ac the esoteric academic journal? Not many people do that, except for other academics, and you know, they will debate it. But if you, what you want to do is have your research make a difference, be seen by policymakers. Getting the media to understand what you're doing is, is very important. When we reapplied for funding, we said, one, we want to add a few more topics. And so we're adding um, pharmaceutical policy, mental health, which has been a very big issue, and obesity, which you're continually reading about in the paper. So these, these are areas, new areas which we're adding. We're also trying to figure out how to do this longer term because we want academics to be able to communicate their material. What issues are in the media tends to very much influence, and how they're reported in the media, tends to influence what people contact 
politicians about and what politicians respond to. So we want to make sure that what's in the media is accurately represented, that the evidence is, is reported. And that's sort of what we've been trying from the beginning. That's what we're still focusing on.